Hello, welcome back to Texas Cooking Today. This is French bread. These are some simple, short, little French baguettes, and I want to show you how to make these little guys. It's a simple recipe, has four ingredients, and it won't take you anything at all to make these. Well, hello, welcome back to Texas Cooking Today. We are going to be working on French bread. Now, this is one of those classic recipes from France that goes way back. It's very simple. It's just some flour, water, yeast, and a little bit of salt. It's how you rise it and how you treat it when it hits the oven that makes all the difference. So, we're going to get right into this. Please stick with me, and this is a cook-along video, so I will cook right along beside your side as it goes. Okay? Join me on this one. Now, the ingredients that we're going to need for our bread are going to be simple. I have them starting with one cup of hot water. Now, you don't have to boil water or anything. Hot tap water is good enough. And if you cannot put your finger down in it without it burning your finger, and you sh should be able to keep it in there for a bit without it hurting you. Now, if it's that warm, then that's fine. It's perfect for hydrating yeast. Now also we have some salt here. This is one and a half teaspoons of salt. This is uh, two and a half teaspoons of yeast or one packet. Back here I have my flour. Now how much flour? You know that's the thing of making bread. Let me explain something to you right off the bat. When it comes to making bread and flour, you go and purchase flour. Get your usual brand. One week uh, and then go back a month later and the same exact flour when you take it home is not going to measure out the same amount for the same bread that you're making. For instance, one week it may be two cups, uh, or rather two and a half cups of flour to a uh, cup of water. And then the next month the same exact brand of flour might be three. It depends on the flour, the wheat, the humidity in the air, the temperature, all kinds of crazy things. But the real truth of the matter is, you never know exactly. So that's sort of the art of bread making, is learning exact, correct temperatures and textures and things like that to make things work. So, what we're going to do is get right into this. Now, I'm about to mix up the ingredients, so let's change our view here. Okay, our ingredients are very simple. I have some water right here. Now, there is another way of making bread that's really cool. It, it uh, involves a technique called autolyzing, and that's where you take your water and your flour, you mix them together, and you just let them sit there for an hour and do nothing at all. When you come back, the gluten's already formed, so all of the mixing that you would have done with a mixer is taken care of for you. You're just ready to knead the dough and mix in uh, a little bit of yeast, and you'll want to save back about a quarter of a cup of water to mix the yeast in so you can knead that into the dough and then also knead the salt into the dough and uh, that way once you've done both of those after autolyzing you've bypassed the need for a mixer okay so mixers are great you do not have to have them to make bread but boy they sure uh, reduce the amount of time instead of spending an hour to autolyze I'm going to use the mixer and it's going to take me 10 minutes of mixing Okay, I've already put my water in here. That was simple enough. Let's go ahead and sprinkle our yeast right down into that. And I'm going to let the yeast sit in there just for a little bit so that it can rehydrate and uh, wake up because that is a uh, dormant yeast right now. And it's going to take it just a little bit to wake up. The salt, do not go ahead and pour your salt down in there just yet. Wait till you start mixing and kneading the dough before you put the salt in. Salt is going to react with uh, yeast and it, it slows down how well that it uh, reproduces and how well it eats and produces um, uh, carbon dioxide and alcohol. And yes, of course, when you make bread, the yeast does make alcohol, okay? So don't, look, don't let that frighten you. It's okay. All of that alcohol cooks off. You can't have bread without first starting with yeast. Yeast makes alcohol. It makes carbon dioxide, but it's also making alcohol. Now, this is sort of an intermediate category of 
bread making and we're going to be moving that more later on. Uh, we're going to get into how to capture wild yeast and all kinds of crazy things. So stick with me on the bread making thing. It's going to grow exponentially. Now I'm just kind of letting the uh, yeast, like I said, wake up. There's no rush on this. Here I have some bread flour. And I'm not going to get real super exact on my measurements. If you notice, I didn't measure that out. And that is because, just like I told you, one day the yeast is going to do this, another day the yeast is going to do that. Uh, oh, excuse me, the flour. What am I saying here? I'm thinking of two subjects at once and I'm losing my mind. Either that or it's possibly homebrew. Hmm, which could it be? Well, we won't ponder on that. Let's sprinkle in some of this flour. Put in another cup. I'm not going to put all of that in there. We're just going to start with part of it. Put my dough hook on here. time. I'm going to leave this running. If you want to sit here and watch it, please do that. Otherwise, listen to this lovely music that we're going to play for you now. checking the hydration level. See it's sticking to my fingers when I barely touch it. That means the hydration level is just slightly high for good French bread. So I'm going to add in some more flour. Let me add in about a quarter of a cup here. Okay, we're going to give you a break from having to watch this go all the way through. So, if you would, pause your video now and let that mix for about another five minutes, okay? If you need to add a little bit of flour, do so. How do you know? If it sticks to the bottom slightly, you need a little bit more flour. Otherwise, leave it alone and let it knead. Well, I've added in about another quarter cup of flour. It was uh, just a bit on the moist side. I'm adding in some salt now. I'm just going to knead that salt in there. 
Some people like to knead the salt in after the second, or excuse me, after the first dries. And uh, that works also if you wish to do that. To me, it seems like a little extra work I don't need to go through. That's one of the reasons I'm not kneading this by hand in front of you. I went out and bought a machine so I wouldn't have to do that. I recommend you do the same thing. I like to keep my workstation clean as I go. It's almost finished. It's got a little bit more kneading to go. Now, what are we really doing here? The thing of it is, is flour contains a thing called gluten, and gluten is a protein, and protein, when it, uh, this protein, when it becomes moistened with uh, water, it has a tendency to turn into a glue, basically. It's a very uh, sticky. And that glue-like substance then bonds one molecule to another and forms little strings. And that's those strings make the dough itself somewhat elastic where it stretches. See how this is starting to stretch? But there it broke. And it broke too easy. So what I want is for it to stretch it way out and it does not break. Okay, so I'm going to keep on kneading. Now again, if you don't have the machine, auto lies. And so what you should be doing right now is just sort of like kicking back, having a beer, and watching a movie or something while your uh, dough is autolyzing. And then after uh, half of the movie's over, you go in and you mix up the rest of it by adding in your yeast and salt, and then you start your first rise. So this is just a little bit faster way of having to do nor not do the autolyzing. So that's what mixers allow us to do is speed up the process a little bit. Let's let it do its job some more. Got a couple of balls in there, don't worry, don't worry form. Just from adding that flour, we caught it up on the bottom and worked it up in there. There we go. It's about to start kneading into it. So I want to let it go for uh, another few minutes here. Okay, it has kneaded long enough now, and it's starting to kick the ball of dough off and throw it from side to side rather vigorously. And when it starts to do that, that tells me that the gluten is really formed up well, and it is now time to start the rising process. So let's go ahead and shut this off. Let's take our dough and pull it off of the hook, and we're looking for a certain consistency. Is it going to be sticky enough, or is it too dry, or what? Now, see how a little bit is sticking to my hands, but not bad, but yet, there we go. It is sticking to me. Now, that's what I'm wanting. Now, let me roll this, and if it turns into a nice, smooth, elastic kind of surface. Okay, now, look at this. That, that smooth, elastic surface is forming. Okay, that means we've got a good formation. Look, I'm stretching it out. Okay, it's tearing just a little bit, not bad. That means the gluten is still forming a little bit, but that's what the first rising process is about. So now I'm going to take this. We're going to put it down in a glass bowl. So let's get a different view real quick. Now, I have my dough in hand. Let's go ahead and take a glass bowl real quick. And we slip that up here. I'm going to take that and we're going to put it down in this bowl. Now, I'm not going to lubricate this because if it does start to stick, and it should just a little bit, it's not a problem. I'm just going to use a scraper or a simple spatula like this to push it on out of there. Now, if you notice what a small amount that is in the bottom of the bowl, and I want to show you this from an angle also. You see that angle? Because we're going to be looking at this later from a low angle because I'm going to have the top covered with a metal pan. Now, here's the thing. If you ever notice, everybody rises dough in glass. Well, that's because yeast has a bad reaction to metal. Now, the mixing bowl, not a big thing. It's not going to react to that and just all die off instantly. However, if it comes in contact with metal and it's there for a long period, the bottom part of the dough isn't going to react properly and you don't get a proper rise out of it. So what I'm going to do is put it in glass and then we'll just cover it with a little bit of metal. And I'm going to put just a little bit of tape on the sides so that it doesn't move around on me. Let's see here. I think I've got a couple of pieces. Yeah, there they are. Just put some tape on the sides. There's other ways you can do this. If you've got saran wrap, use it. If you've got some uh, aluminum foil, you can do that. 
This time I'm just going to be cheap about it. We're going to go with tape. Okay, and another piece I've got for the front. So, we're going to check the rise on this later and we're going to look at it from way down underneath here. Okay, so, give it time. We'll check back on this in about 30 minutes. Oh, by the way, rice time on this usually takes a few hours, even if you're using a fast-acting yeast. Because you are not doubling the bulk, you're going to triple the bulk, three times the size of that little bulk, okay? Let's take a closer look at our rise. Now, we can see inside of the bowl that this has grown tremendously, okay? And if we get a close-up here, that's what we're going to work on, you can see the bubbles. See those bubbles up in there? And that is very distinct to this kind of bread, and that's exactly what we're looking for. There's another bubble down on the side over here. Look at that guy. Big old fat thing. And we're wanting lots of those little air pockets up inside of this bread. So, we're going to let this keep sitting here and rising. You see the little ridge that's up here? That's very characteristic of a good quality French bread, okay? And you'll see that little ridge appear in several different cases after it's been kneaded and rolled into baguettes in between rises. So that's, that's sort of a commonality. So anyway, let's keep it rising. It is more than doubled in bulk. I'm looking for three times, so about, mm, let's give it about another 45 minutes or an hour. It appears that our dough now has tripled in bulk. It's really nice. You can see even a couple of little blisters where there's some air pockets in it. Now what I want to do is to knead this down and to rise it a second time now. So I'm just going to very gently pull it away from the edges of the bowl. Now, very nice, a bit sticky, sticking here and there. Mm -hmm. I can handle it, just rub it a little bit, and the dough will pick it right back up. nice and elastic now. And I don't want to work this too much, just lightly. That's all I'm going to do. Just give it some gentle rolling now. As I do that, I pinch it underneath. Okay. Now, we're going to start our second rise. It needs a little bit more time in the bowl. Let's take a quick look at our dough. There it is. It's rising wonderfully. Now, the rise time so far on this has been about an hour, and I have it over a pilot on a uh, stove. It's not enough to make it hot, but it's enough to keep it warm right around the uh, 80 degree mark. However, it needs to be said, the slower you rise the dough for French bread, the better off you are. It gives it far better texture and you get a better crumb on the bread. And again, that crumb, that's the size of those air pockets we're looking at inside. So, it looks like it needs to uh, increase just a bit more. It has doubled, but I want it to triple in bulk. Okay, we have come to the end of our second rise. Look at that. It has tripled in bulk. Now. I want to take this and once again gently roll it out of here. Look at this little, kind of a jiggly little mass. Now, if I can poke it and it comes back up, they say you need to let it rise a little more. On this one, I've achieved what I need and uh, it has risen as much as I need. So, we're going to go ahead and roll these out and we're going to make some baguettes with it.
push it free from that bottom with my spatula. You can use a scraper for this also. A plastic scraper works really well for this. There we go. Now I have some flour here in case I need. As I'm rolling this out, I want it to, uh, to not stick at all. Now, very gently, and I'm working this very softly, as I don't want to break down any of the air pockets inside of it, what I want to do is to cut my dough. And I want to cut it up into three parts. There we go. So I'll have three baguettes. It looks like one of them. This one's probably going to be a little smaller than the others. That'll be okay. There we go. Three little triangles. Isn't that nice? And the inside of the dough is extremely soft. Now, with the smallest of these triangles, let me show you what we're going to do when we start kneading this. I'm going to take this point and fold it over, this point and fold it over, and then take this point and fold it back. And I'm going to make a little square and we're going to kind of pat that out. And then from there, I'm going to work on turning this into a little cylinder, okay? So, first corner over, second corner over, third corner over, there. Now, what did that do for me? Let me show you here. They gave us more of a little, almost a rectangle. It's a little wider up here, but still, we're, we're working on it, okay? Now, it is slightly sticky. I'm just going to put out a slight amount of flour here, just to make it a little easier for me to work with. Now, this small edge, I want to fold it up. Not all the way across, but about one third of the way. And I'm just going to mash it in. Now that I want to turn in half, and I want to fold that and mash it down again. And I want to do that one last time. I'm forming a little ridge right in the middle of it, and I'm using this part of my hand to do that with. You can do this or whatever. I just find this handy. I'm going to roll this over. And you can see the, the crease from the previous roll. And I'm going to mesh that down with the heel of my hand. There we go. And there we have it. I've got the basic starting a little cylinder, okay? It's a little pointy on this end. That's not a big deal. Mash that again, just gently. You don't want to force it hard. I want to take this and roll it into what looks like a super skinny little baguette. I want it to be about an inch in diameter, really. There you go. Notice that springs back just slightly. Don't let that bother you. And sometimes it's a little bit uneven. Don't worry about that. That's just going to add to the character of your loaf, okay? There we go. Now, I have a simple little cylinder here. This will grow up into a beautiful baguette. And there's still little blisters where I've got plenty of air pockets in it, okay? Now, what I need to do is to transfer this to a pan and I need to have my pan fixed so that the dough will not stick to it as it rises for the third time. So let's take a baking pan. Got some dark on it from the last time I was baking. And that came from this right here. This is some semolina. This is durum wheat semolina. And what I'm going to do is just gently dust over my pan with this and I want my pan to be thoroughly covered with it okay so I can be generous with it you can also use cornmeal in fact this looks a lot like cornmeal go let's take our first little baguette and I want to lay it 
next to one edge, and it's about the the distance from the edge of the width of the baguette. Okay, so if the baguette's an inch wide, I put an inch away from the edge. Okay, now let's work the other ones. Okay, our other cuts, remember that? We're going to fold a corner in, fold another corner in, and the last corner, fold it up. There we make a little pouch, a little simple dough pouch, okay? Now, we'll take that lower edge, and mash it just a little bit more to press it out. The lower edge, fold it about a third of the way up, and press it. Now, I'm going to fold it in half. Press that just a little more, I guess. Now, I'm going to fold it in half. And you don't have to go through all of these steps as long as you can get a good cylinder to work with. But I find that the extra kneading makes for a nice little loaf. There we go. Now, I'm going to take this and form my little ridge in the middle. So we can start working out our cylinder. There we go, one little ridge. Fold it in half. There we go. Mash it down again. A slight amount of flour, not much. I got just a bit too much for this. My dough is, dough is quite uh, dry at this point, so I don't need to dry it out any further. I just need to keep it from sticking. And it's sticking to me just slightly, but not bad. Okay, time to roll that out. Start in the middle and work your way to the ends gently. And you'll have to do this more than once, of course, because it does like to shrink. There we go. Now, I have my second baguette done. Let's go ahead and work the third one. I'll put that on my tray. Now it's ready for its rise. And the third one. There we go. Let's fold that, fold it, fold it, mash it down. Now, we'll take this edge, fold it over a third of the way, mash it down. Take that last edge, fold it over again. And again, it's starting to get really sticky on me. Sticking to my breadboard real bad. There we go, that'll solve that. Form that little trench. There we go. Little trench in the middle of it. Let's fold it over on itself again and press. Now we have our cylinder formed really well. It's very even. <clears throat> Look at that. See how well that works, how even it makes it? So just a little bit of simple kneading like that is all we have to do. And I can see little blisters in the dough. And that's just gonna make wonderful air pockets. Now, had I not risen this the second time, uh, then the dough would not have that in it. So that's why we do that, is to get those big air pockets up in it. All right, here we go. Looks like I've got my third baguette. I'm gonna put it on the pan, and then we're gonna rise it. I wanna show you these. You've noticed how I placed them offset on the pan. They're off a little bit to one side. 
and that's because later I'm going to take a couple of my turners and that would be what a lot of people call a spatula and we're going to slip them under the side here and roll this over each one. Now if you've got a thin piece of cardboard that's lo as long as your baguette, that would work to turn it over also. Just something that's, that, that's hard and rigid so that you can gently roll this after these rise. And the idea there is underneath the bottom of this, it's going to be a lot more moist. And it's that moisture on the outer part of the dough that creates a hard crust when you bake it. That's the reason we roll it. Now earlier I also mentioned to you that sometimes you'll see a characteristic fold or roll or an edge. And here it is right there on the edge of that dough. It just keeps reappearing in different ways. You see it here on this one. Okay, and that's very characteristic of uh, a French bread that has been made properly. So we're going to take these thin little baguettes, we're going to let them rise up until they're three times as big as they are now in diameter, and then, and only then, that's when they're going to go into an oven at 450 degrees. That's a special neat trick and I'll show you how we do that because we are going to use a lot of uh, humidity in the oven. We need to make steam in the oven actually and so with that extra moisture it's going to make a crisp crust. We'll see that next. It looks like these are almost risen up quite enough. Now what I'm going to do is take one of my largest skillets and it's going to be this thing, a good heavy skillet, and I'm going to place it in the bottom of the oven. I'm turning the oven on at 450 degrees and I'm going to let that preheat for about 15-20 minutes so it gets the heat deep inside of the walls of the oven. You don't want just the interior hot, you want the oven itself hot. That way when you open the door and close it repeatedly as is required for, to form the crust on these baguettes, then uh, you're not going to have to worry about losing all of the heat and you won't have to worry about the oven's recovery time after you do lose some heat. Alright, so the idea is, is keep the oven really hot and also keep the oven really humid and that's the reason the fry pan in the bottom, the fry pan, we're going to dump water in it when it's time to put the bread in there and that way it, it uh, will humidify the oven, it'll extend the amount of time it takes for the crust to form on the outside of these baguettes and that will cause the crust to be harder and crisper and that is the whole idea behind the French baguette uh, along with having a real fluffy airy interior. So on to the next step we're going to heat the oven up, put the pan in the bottom. Okay we're about up to the time where we need to put these into the oven. Now they have risen up really nice and what I need to do is to try to roll them over now this is the classic method where you roll the French bread over and allow the underside to be exposed. There we go. And then slash it across the top in that way. It 
was actually softer than the bottom, which is usually the contrary. We'll see how this works. All right, they slightly deflated a little bit as I was cutting it, but not bad. Now, I'm ready to put those down in the oven, and when I do, I'm going to throw in a cup of water into that fry pan in the bottom that's uh, heating up down there at 450 degrees. And just before I put them in, I'm going to moisten them down with another spritz. So, there we go. Now, you can get these spray bottles, a lot of different cooking supplies. They are very handy. They can spray oil, they can spray water, whatever you want them to handle, they do very well with. Now, let's put those in the okay, oven. Okay, here we go. Ready to put them in the oven. Open. Water. There we go. That water hits it. That steam comes out fast. you got to watch out and keep your face back. Now, we're going to wait for that to finish doing what it does. We want to make sure that we spritz this every two to three minutes with water to make that crust just as hard as absolutely possible. I'm setting my timer for two minutes and as soon as that goes off then we're going to be hitting it with a little more water on the top of the crust. The two minute timer just went off so here we go. So it's going to be another spritz and if the frying pan is dry we'll put more water in it otherwise we'll wait. A little more water in the fry pan. There go. Okay, we're going to set the timer for another two minutes. Now, when that counts down, we'll do it once again. It has now been another two minutes, so we're going to quickly open it up and repeat the same process. We'll do this over and over for about the first half of the cooking cycle. They're doing everything that good French loaves should do. They're expanding nicely. Okay, now another two minutes and we'll hit it again. Two minutes has passed. Let's go ahead and hit this again. A little more water in that fry pan. We want to keep it steaming down there so we have a lot of moisture in the oven. The slower we form the crust, the harder it gets, and that's what all of this extra water is about. All right, we are now up to another two minutes, and it's time to spritz it once more. I'm pretty sure I still have water in the fry pan. Now, after this one, I'm going to increase the amount of time to three minutes. I'll do it a couple times that way, then maybe once more after five minutes, and then we're just going to let it crisp up. slight odor of burning and all that's going to be is just the semolina on the bottom of the pan starting to burn. Don't let that bother you, okay? It will not affect the overall product. A little bit of water down below. Okay. Now, this time I'll set the timer for four minutes. And that should be the last time we have to spritz that. I mean, might do it once more. There we go. We'll see you back in four minutes. Okay, it has been four more minutes now. Let's take a quick look at this and see how we're doing. Nice golden color starting to appear. 
here. Now, quick, I'm going to add a little more water to that skillet so we can keep the humidity high in there. Good. Now, I'm going to leave it closed until it finishes crisping up. We're going to turn that bread into a nice, deep, golden brown. Now, I believe it should be time to take them out. Yes. Oh, beautiful, golden brown. Okay, now, the burnt edges around on the uh, pan here, all of that. Uh, some lima that we use, don't worry about that. And any of that that's on the bread will also brush off now. So, we'll take a look at those as soon as they cool. There is one thing I want to mention before we allow these to cool, and that is the sound when they thump. Let me pull one of these up. You hear that sound? That is that is common for a loaf that is fully finished, okay? If it uh, had sort of a, a more of a dull, dead sound to it, like you were hitting cotton or something, then, well, it wouldn't be fully cooked, so you have to let them cook a little longer. That's that typical sound that you're looking All for. All right, now let's take a look at these little guys. They're just now starting to cool. It's still fairly warm, but it's getting there. Let's cut into it. Goodness me. This blade, which is as sharp as a razor, is having a hard time getting through it. The crust is, is crispy. It's starting to crack already. And look at that. Look at the crumb in there. The crumb is that... Um, the porosity of the bread and it's absolutely beautiful on this it's just the way French bread should be exactly and the crust nice and hard exactly what I'm looking for there you have it French baguettes hey give this a try and I'm sure you're gonna love them well there you have it French bread the classic the real thing French bread well, I tell you what, those aren't the prettiest loaves that I've ever made, but I tell you what, they sure tasted awful good. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching Texas Cooking today. If you would, check out my channel. Please subscribe. Texas Cooking Today. Thank you for watching Texas Cooking Today, the show where you can get great recipes and the best techniques are taught. Please subscribe to Texas Cooking Today, where you will always find something hot and ready to eat.